First of all, your reaction to the loss of your colleague Imran Hussein from the shadow front bench. I understand how colleagues feel about this. I understand the strength of feeling. And what we all want to see is more humanitarian aid getting into Gaza. It's absolutely essential that happens, that we see the release of hostages, uh, but also in the long run that we get to a lasting political settlement of a viable Palestinian state alongside a safe and secure Israel. That's what we all want to see. So I, I do recognise um, how colleagues feel about these issues, but I think humanitarian pauses, making sure that we have the opportunity for increased aid to get into Gaza is the right approach and I think it's what we all want to see, more aid getting in, greater support. Uh, Joe Biden wants to see a three-day pause in the fighting and he thinks this could you know, get a deal for some of the, the hostages. Uh, is that something you feel you could support? It's right that the US have been taking a leading role in, in all of this and they've been calling humanitarian pauses. We've seen regular visits to the region from the US Secretary of State. They have an important role to play in the longer term settlement that we all want to see in terms of a political solution to this. And they have also stressed, as is important, as, as we have stressed, that Israel's actions in response to the appalling t uh, terrorist incidents that they experienced must be in line with international law. They are in line with international law at this point. Uh, there's a process uh, for all of this to be determined. I don't think it's helpful to speculate on that. And I, and I think the challenge that we all of us face is that, you know, it's a fast moving situation where sometimes events on the ground only become clearer later. But where there are concerns that we have seen a breach, there is a proper process to be followed. And it's right that happens is not alone in his concerns. Andy Burnham, Sadiq Khan, the leader um, of Labour in Scotland, all share his views, as well as we've talked about the resignation of 11 councillors. My question to, to you is who's going to be next from the shadow front bench? Look, we're all horrified by what we're seeing. I, I know how strongly people feel about this. I feel it too. And we see every day on our television screens the, the suffering, the plight of, of innocent Palestinian people, of, of children, of families, and we all want more to happen to get aid in and to make sure that all of uh, the actions that are being taken are consistent with international law. That's our primary focus. That's what we want to see happen. I think that's what we're all, what we're all concerned about. Bridget, let's talk about domestic matters, and um, you're the Shadow Education Secretary, and I know you are somewhat concerned, looking ahead, to the relationship mm -hmm. between schools, families, and government. How would you describe that relationship at the moment? At the moment, the relationship between government and schools and between schools and families feels very broken. I think especially coming out of the pandemic, we saw a real fracturing in that relationship. Alongside that, we had industrial action that Tory ministers allowed to drag on for far too long that caused further disruption to our children's education. And then more recently, we've seen the crisis in our schools of crumbly concrete that again has disrupted children's education. If I were Education Secretary right now, I would be tackling what is a complex issue around persistent non-attendance at schools, making sure that there is extra help to get children back into the classrooms. Every day at school matters to our children. But at the minute, uh, if things continue as they are, by 2025, one in four children will regularly be missing school. That is unacceptable. We cannot allow this drift to continue. And Labour's plans around extra mental health support in our secondary schools, breakfast clubs for all of our primary school children, that would make a big difference in tackling this problem. You were in government. Do you agree with what Rishi Sunak was saying effectively in the King's speech yesterday that uh, once Labour is in power, you will be losing a lot of the hard fought Brexit freedom, seeking closer alignment with the European Union? Well, it was a very thin King speech overall, so it doesn't surprise me that Rishi Sunak wants to revisit uh, the battles of the past. Uh, our focus is on making sure that we make the best of Brexit, we make it work, and we secure a better deal that's in the long-term interests of the country. But we don't re want to revisit that or reopen all of that. I think it's interesting that it's Rishi Sunak who's got so little to say about the cost of living crisis, about the challenges we see in education, about all of the pressures that families are under right now, that he starts talking about all of this. Richard, I'd like to finish on that about the cost of living crisis and the challenges that, that mm. face education. A lot of us only, only see, say, education through our own experiences and through our own eyes. And if we had good time at school and it went well for us, that's good. 
But uh, someone like me, I mean, I look here and you, you talk about persistent absence from school and I'm thinking, well, yeah, somebody must take, you know, a day off every two or three months or whatever it is. But I'm, I'm suspecting you're talking about something much more than that. I mean, th th this absence, how bad is it? When we talk about persistent non-attendance, we're talking about children that are missing more than 10% of their time at school. So that is you know, a big chunk of their education that they're losing out on. And it has a really serious impact on their life chances. We need to sort that out. We need to provide extra help uh, to our children and families. And as you say, we, we all of us kind of exceed that ourselves. If we have children at school, we see the impact when, when I, you know, I see the impact when I speak to school leaders, when I visit schools, they're grappling with some really complex and difficult challenges. And that cost of living pressure that families are facing has a knock on effect too, as does insecure housing that has a really significant impact and mental health you know so many of our children at the moment are struggling with mental health with anxiety with their well-being if i was secretary of state i'd be doing a lot more to provide extra support to children to make sure that when they're in school they're able to make the best of it yeah that's not even counting crumbling buildings concrete profiled with with holes but um just just that whole thing about um the pressure that that kids are under and how bad things are. Um, it really doesn't look like um, a good year ahead. And what sort of money is available in the budgets for all this sort of thing? I mean, even if you guys get in, what, do you, what can you do to fix this? I mean, the country's in a terrible state, let's be honest. There's a lot that's broken and we haven't seen growth in our economy for a very long time, which has meant the government hasn't been investing in our public services. You know, we're determined to bring growth back to our economy. But we know right now we could be making immediate change. So we would end the tax breaks that private schools enjoy and we put that money into more teachers in our classrooms and better mental health support for our children and much more besides. That's a significant sum of money. The Institute for Fiscal Studies say it's in the region of 1.3 to 1.5 billion pounds a year we could put into our schools and alongside that breakfast clubs for all of our primary school children we'd pay for that by ending the non-dom tax status that the global super rich enjoy it's politics is about the priorities and choices that you make and i think those tax breaks can't be defended and the money could be put to better use supporting families during what's a really difficult time shadow education secretary we've got to leave it there thank you very much indeed for your time this morning